Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple placing system in Roblox Studio. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to find whatever object we want to be able to place. We can get this object from the toolbox. I'm just going to pick a bed for this tutorial. Next, let's go through the bed and make sure there are no parts and other parts, extra scripts, lights, or anything else we don't need, as well as renaming the bed to something that's easier, so just bed. Now there are two important things to remember with each placeable object. First, we need to make sure that it has a primary part. Second, we need to make sure that all the parts are welded to the primary part. Now there are lots of ways to weld an object. I'm just going to be using the Moon Animator Suite Weld Model tool to weld this bed together. Alrighty, now that we have our model and our model is ready to go, we can start the coding. So. First off, we are going to need two scripts. The first script we can put in server script service, and this is going to be called server placing. The second script is actually going to be a local script. It's going to go into starter player scripts, and we're going to name this one to client placing. Now, before we start opening our scripts and playing around with them, we want to make a remote event real fast inside of replicated storage and we're going to name that place. This remote event is what's going to allow the client to communicate to the surfer where to place the bed. Alright, great. So now that we've done all of that, let's move on to the code. So, first up, let's open up our client placing script. And let me move over some client code. And in short, basically, what I'm doing is watching the player when they move their mouse and moving the bed along with their mouse so they can get an idea as to where the bed is being placed. Now, focusing on line 37, you can see as we click our mouse, we are going to fire that remote event we made earlier to tell the server to place our bed. Alright, and that's about all we need for the client script. Now, moving on to the server script, or server placing. Basically, all this is doing is watching for the client to fire that remote, and when that happens, placing the bed on the server side so that all the clients can see it. Now let's go ahead and hit play and test this all out. Alright, so as you can see, as the player moves their mouse around, the bed follows the player's mouse wherever it goes on the grid, and when we click, there you go, it placed a bed. And we can make a bunch more if we like. And there you have it, a simple placing system in Roblox Studio. If you wanted to do more, you could add things such as UI to customize what the player is placing, or limits on the server to where the player can place things. It's really anything you can imagine. Alright, so taking a more in-depth look at the client placing code, I will be stepping through each line and explaining to you how it all works. So first off, we have the player and camera objects that we need to define. Next, we have three services. First, the user input service to get the mouse position. Next, the run service to use with render step, which I will explain shortly. And lastly, replicated storage, which we will need for the remote event. Next, we are going to want to define our remote event and the object that the script is going to be using. And now we can move on to the functions. So, the first function we use is called get mouse point. It takes three parameters, the x and y positions on the screen, that the mouse is at. Stepping through this function, we have first a list of raycast parameters. We use the filter type blacklist to ignore given objects, and then we give it the bed object. This will allow us to place on the grid like we want. Next, we're going to use the camera to create a ray using the method screen point to ray on the player's camera object. This will create a ray based on the mouse's position. Then, using the method raycast on workspace, we pass the origin of the ray, the direction, with a multiplier to ensure that we touch down on the world with the ray. And lastly, our previously defined raycast parameters. And finishing this function off, we check to see if the ray exists. If it doesn't, return nothing. However, if it does, return the part that the mouse is over and the position that the mouse is over. And that will wrap up our get mouse point function. Next, we have an example of deprecated code, which was the function get mouse. 
the user input service has replaced this, so you should really no longer use that git mouse function. Remember that you should always try and use the newest advances when programming. The old ones may no longer be supported. This next function listens for when the player clicks their mouse. It will then get the mouse position using the get mouse point function and then get the target in position that the mouse was on. Next, it will fire the remote event telling the server where and what needs to be placed. And lastly, our render stepped function. This function will constantly get the mouse position and update it to the position that we get from our get mouse point function. This will ensure our object that we're placing always follows the mouse. All right, so here we have our server placing script. We first define our replicated storage service. Then we wait for the remote to receive a connection from the client, or in other words, wait for the client to fire the remote. The client should be firing the remote with a place position and the place object. The player parameter you see here is a default parameter meaning that it is sent regardless of what the player fires, and it will allow you to see which player fired that remote. Now, looking inside of this function, we first print out the player and the data the player sent. Then we create a clone of that object the player sent. And finally, we position the cloned object and then set the parent of it to workspace so that it is visible for the server or any other clients to see. Thanks guys for watching today, and all the code shown in this tutorial will actually be linked in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out and play around with it. Hope you guys are having a great day, and I will see you next time.